Welcome, everybody, to another buzzed head episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. That's right, man. I had to get rid of the old Johnny Rico. I really enjoyed the do. It's just, you know, uh, I don't think it really fits me. Not to mention, I cannot stand trying to find a barber to cut my hair appropriately. Seems like they all jack me up on purpose. Anyways, enough of the hair. Today, we're going to be jumping into a courtroom to witness a teen get sentenced to decades in prison. Back in 2022, in the country's biggest mall, Mall of America, there was an altercation inside of a Nordstrom that left an individual dead. The victim was shot to death. And like I said, today we're going to witness one of the two shooters get sentenced. So let's get into it. If you enjoy this type of content, all things lock up and crime related, then this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. And check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Alright, so it's going to start off with the teen speaking to the courts, apologizing for what he's done. I want to apologize for bringing pain and suffering to the victim family. Also, the lady got shot. And to the community of Blue Team, the Ball of America, also want to apologize for my mom and family. I got with 18 and I fully developed to really understand the impact of my action. I know and understand what I did was wrong, but I so full, full responsibility for my actions. I would say I'm sorry, but saying I'm sorry is not only what I've done. I was influenced by false friend movies, music, and video games, but I cannot take that my action. I am truly apologize for my actions. Well, I didn't hear much of it, but it sounds like, you know, he's kind of blaming it on things. He was 18, his brain wasn't developed enough, music, friends. Look, everybody has those same kind of things around them. It's up to you if you want to pull a trigger or not. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. So, let me start by expressing my sympathies, my condolences for, as Mr. Hudson's aunt, described it, the crushing grief that you have to live with every day. I can only, I, you know, I, I can't wrap my head around this. No one who hasn't gone through what you're going through can. All I can do is acknowledge it. But the pain, and it doesn't go away. And I understand that, and I am truly sorry. I want to at least acknowledge a comment and that, that uh, family members made, because I agree with it. It is remarkable that only two of the people who are involved in this matter will end up in front of adult courts. I think that's unfortunate because it fails to recognize, and this I need you to hear, Mr. Adams, right, that the criminal justice system must take into account the personal characteristics of the person who's in front of them. I acknowledge you're young. But the criminal justice system also exists to punish people when they do bad things. And we forget that as a system at our peril. When I look at this young man's face, all I see is no hope. But I don't know if I mentioned this in the beginning, there was a group of people that were involved in this. I'm guessing the other ones are gonna be going through the juvenile process. In crafting a sentence today, I have taken into account the remarkable circumstances of in the middle of a holiday rush in a major retailer or a retail establishment, Mr. Wright, you and several others decided to hunt someone down and execute them. And we've all seen that tape. And there can be no other definition of what happened that day. And your recitation of acting in self-defense that day, you weren't. You participated with a group of people who killed someone. And it is as simple as that. And the sooner you wrap your head around that and understand that and acknowledge that, the better off we'll be. I do, you know, so I, you know, I did make the findings, and I'll repeat them, that it was a group of three or more. You put a whole lot of other people in harm's way in addition to the guy that you killed, one of whom was struck by a bullet. And there were children and loads of folks 
that deserve to be nowhere close to any of this that you were involved in. So, taking that all into account, and taking into account your age, I've arrived at the following. Sir, you've entered a plea of guilty to murder in the second degree. You've also entered a plea of guilty to assault in the second degree. You've told me enough for me to believe you are guilty of those offenses, so I accept your plea of guilty. I adjudicate you guilty on both of those um, crimes. And starting with count one, murder in the second degree, I sentence you to custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of 367 months. Against that sentence, you are entitled to credit for 524 days. Restitution is reserved for 45 days. $50 fine, $75 surcharge, and $3 law library fee to be taken from prison earnings. You may never possess, use, transport, firearms, or ammunition, or explosives for the remainder of your life. And if you have not already done so, you must provide a DNA sample. As to the second degree assault, that person has suffered a real harm at this. And it, and uh, I, I do not take a moment away from anything that the family of the deceased has told me, but I acknowledge at the same time that poor person had nothing to do with any of this and still took a bullet. So as to that sentence, I sentence you to the custody of the Commissioner of Corrections for a period of six months as provided by law. What I am doing today, however, and I'll be frank, it is acknowledging your age, is making that sentence concurrent. So your sentence is 30 years and seven months. No, no. So uh, that is to be executed forthwith. Is there anything else for the record? Smoked. I did. There he goes to start his 30 years in prison. Dang. Smoked like a campsite glizzy over an open fire. When it comes to being a juvenile, all right, you could get a slap on the wrist in the courtroom many times for serious crimes that would send an adult to prison. But don't for a second think if you want to take someone's life, yours ain't going to be taken in some kind of way. Teenager or not, like you've seen today, decades of your life could be gone. But this is even scarier, all right? A lot of these young cats, they know what they're facing if they get caught. They don't care. And that's what I think happened with this case. The victim, just like the judge said, was hunted down and executed. It wasn't no spur of the moment. Oh, there's my enemy. Let's fight him at the shoe store. Nope, if you're to ask me, they went in there with murder on their mind. So in all actuality, in my eyes, man, 30 years in prison, he was spared. He'll be out probably by, I'd say, 45. If he does good, which I highly doubt, he's probably going to go into the penitentiary with that 30 years and turn into a straight convict. I'm just playing, man. He could become a good houseman. Buffing and cleaning floors, cooking ramen noodles like a pro. Get out and become a role model, law-abiding citizen. You never know. Very sad situation, though. Many lives have been changed forever. My condolences go out to the victim's family, man. I can't even imagine just shopping and then getting gunned down. Anyway, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. I got plenty more content coming your way. And the only way to make sure that you don't miss anything is by hitting that notification bell and setting it to all. But y'all be easy, be safe, and more importantly than anything, stay free.